UN summit shows how Donald Trump is doing more damage to world climate than we ever realized as the UN climate talks due to a close in Bonn on Friday. Delegates will look back on these talks as the moment the U.S. tried to present Donald Trump's vision for environmental action and was met with outrage and derision. These two weeks have seen nearly 200 countries come together to support the Paris Agreement, in an unprecedented effort to coordinate against climate change. Now with Syria on board, the U.S. is left as the only country outside of this global endeavor. For its part, the American delegation tried to explain how clean coal could play a part in slowing climate change. The response was best summed up by the unlikely figure of Pope Francis, who dismissed the perverse attitudes of climate deniers and urged negotiators to accelerate efforts to curb carbon emissions. No one here has been slow to speak out against the U.S. federal government. Yet the summit has also shown clearly how the U.S. under Donald Trump can continue to damage the Paris Accord, and thereby the world, in ways we are only just beginning to understand. This year's conference, held in Germany but hosted by Fuji, was the first stage of a two-year process at the end of which countries need to agree on the rulebook to implement the Paris Agreement. In June, Mr. Trump announced his intention to withdraw the U.S. from the accord, but this will not take effect before November 2020 at the earliest. As a result, the Trump administration is still technically sat at the negotiating table, and remains a threatening force to the fragile balance of the deal. They have decided that they are not going to be playing the game of the Paris Agreement, but they still want to be inside the room and decide the rules, Harjit Singh, Action Aid's global lead on climate change, told The Independent. Countries siding with the U.S. inside the negotiations and on matters like its coal initiative should look beyond the apparent legitimacy of the country itself, he said. If you are siding with the U.S. now, you are not just siding with the country, you are siding with Donald Trump. Do you want to side with a climate denier? Speaking at the conference, Emmanuel Macron said this week that the EU should pick up the bill where the US drops its financial contributions to a key advisory body on climate change. But, according to Mr Singh, there is a danger that other rich countries in the EU, as well as the likes of Australia and Canada, use the general outcry against America as a cover-up to avoid genuine progress on key issues such as ramping up ambition before the Paris deal comes into effect in 2020. The U.S. is becoming a punching bag. Everybody is focusing on what they are doing and nobody is noticing what other rich countries are doing, said Mr. Singh. Steve Hers, senior policy advisor on climate and energy for the Sierra Club Environmental Organization, told The Independent that even if the U.S. had not deliberately taken the negotiations off track, he was concerned that if the Trump administration goes backwards, other countries could decide to follow suit and tone down their ambitions. Some countries just don't want to move forwards and they could decide to say, look the U.S. is not doing anything, why should we be doing something, he added. But time for robust action is pressing with early estimates from the Global Carbon Project showing global carbon emissions expected to rise 2% in 2017 after remaining relatively flat over the last three years. There was some cause for hope in Bonn, Mr. Hurst said, highlighting the momentum built by the American grassroots we were still in campaign, backed by citizens.